We're making sandwiches for the people out on the jobs for their lunches so they don't have to come back here to eat lunch. They need 14 lunches. Don't forget your mustard. I'm packing my lunch. I might share with you if you're good. And then I'm gonna need one less skilled and one more skilled person down here. I'm trying to create more work for people to do. I'm creating the work so these homeowners can get back in their homes. Steve Tiber. <laughs> if I had a hammer, I'd hammer in the morning. We have all kinds of tools in here, power tools, hand tools, you name it, we carry it. Got the air compressor today. Gonna do some finishing nails for some trim. It's gonna be a good day. I don't know what we would have done without Eight Days of Hope. Eight Days of Hope volunteers just impact people all over our community. It's been incredible. You've had an incredible impact. Some cabinets in the kitchen. These steps. Flooring, we got roofing. Put our bathrooms and our kitchens together. Painted some of the walls outside. Without eight days of hope, I wouldn't be able to go back into my house. I just didn't have it. I mean, it's just what it is, eight days of hope. And it's hope everlasting. More than anything, just brought in an energy that we don't have. Eight Days of Hope came in and they said, no, we're gonna lift you up, not just your house, but your spirits, and they did. We didn't know what we're going to do. And I'm so grateful for all the people who volunteered with Eight Days of Hope. And they treated uh, my house like it was their house. When you meet people from Eight Days of Hope in the front of your house, that is where you are meeting the Good Samaritan. First things first, we, we pray. That's what kept us through the storm. So after Hurricane Harvey, all of the local churches gathered and tried to help the best way we possibly could, but the situation was so massive. And we were losing hope, honestly, because we were fighting an uphill battle. And your name says it all, you really do bring hope. And that's what you brought us. In the projects that we come into a city and do, we try to find something that we can do in the community. Not only putting people back in their homes, but helping to improve the community where everyone can enjoy. So this park is a part of that effort for us here in uh, Santa Fe. Y'all's volunteers have come out, they've touched so many in our community, and it has meant the world to me and to many others, especially to a lot of the students in the area. Okay, let's get plenty more sheetrock ordered for all of these jobs here. 81 and a quarter. 56 and a half. They should be able to move into it this weekend. It's amazing what we do here just to get Chick-fil-A. <laughs> when you come out here and volunteer with everybody, it's, it's a community, it's a family. It, it's the, the hardest work you'll ever do, but it's the funnest work you'll ever do. Well, now I know how to cut sheetrock, and I know how to do mud. My dad told me how to do the roller and the brush. We're empty nesters. Our kids are grown, they're gone, and we love doing this. We got pecans. It's a pecan. 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 Pecan.
Hey guys, Steve Tiber with one of my best friends, Chrissy from Iowa. Oh my gosh, she is a hard worker. There's four. All right, that's 10 bucks, right? That's it. We're gonna leave when we finish this afternoon and get back at daylight tomorrow morning. One more day, one more day, one more day. Well, I keep up with Steve's schedule, so. And I do a little bit of everything. We have so much fun here, so please come next time and join us. I'll be rolling forks, knives, and spoons and napkins for the night's dinner. I did 40 and took a break. The nice menu is rice, beef tips and gravy, butter beans, Swiss Schubert rolls, and also for dessert is chocolate seed cake. I am in a game like 50 pounds this week. They are awesome. Thank you, 250, and we got three, three, give me three, give me three. I'm grateful to God to have people out there that are willing to d donate their time and volunteer it and help others in need. Harvey washed me out, but eight days of hope put me back together, and now I can sleep good at night. I know that God sent these angels to give me hope. We never would have thought that we would have went through the things that we went through, but with eight days of hope, we're almost home. When you guys finish and you fly off or drive off and you go home, everything's done. You're leaving a reputation that is good and godly that says we love you and we'll help you. And that helps us share the gospel moving forward from here. So I want to thank you for that. When you get a uh, noticeable, a significant, a visible uh, number of people that come in, it's an outward sign that, that reaches all the way to the heart uh, and gives us hope. Every wall, every floor, every cabinet, everything has, is touched by love, it's touched by God. It's, it's something that we're going to have in our house long after they leave. That's what these guys are leaving behind, a lot of love. I mean, it's just outpouring of love and you can feel it. For us, you're leaving a new home, a new start. And for the people who volunteer, I promise you, you have made a lot of people's dreams come true. Left us praising God for um, the blessings that they have left behind. When you leave, you can, you can see that, that people have been lifted up and embraced by people who, who love God. What you leave behind, material things, material changes, those they don't matter. But how the Lord Jesus used you to leave an impression of service to Him is a powerful ministry. Our lives have been changed. We don't want eight days of hope to leave. <laughs>